expecting, oh, we're going to get to Metropolis and he's like going to be Superman, right? But no, that's not what happens. But it the just opposite. It's completely the opposite. I was like, wait, 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 wait. You said he's going to become Superman? Then oh, show's opposite. over. Show's over, pal. More yeah, like asshole know. man or something. I don't know what I was thinking with that, but essentially like, like Dark Knight before running. Dark Knight even came to be with this opening cold opening heist mission. Yeah, I was going to say Christopher Nolan must have watched this scene, which means he is mu- he must have seen Smallville. Like like that it can't be a coincidence. He's taking notes. Come on, you think filmmakers of WB who makes DC movies have not watched Smallville and taken a lot of notes from that show? How did all right, all right, so first off, Clark just steals a motorcycle and drives just to drive it through the bank. Like I yeah. can believe he breaks the glass, but that motorcycle is no way breaking a bank glass. I don't believe for a but, second. But, but to be is- fair, but to be fair, he has powers that can break yeah. through glass. Like, like, let's be fair. So we can we can like we can get that a pass. He but if it was an ordinary guy, then it wouldn't be as believable. He could literally just been. I thought it would have been cooler if he would have just like when they're robbing the place, he would have just right been right behind the guy. Like, yeah, why? Could, but also, why couldn't he just super speed into the bank? Why did he need a crotch rocket to crash? Yeah, but why would he need that? He has power. Gotta be theatrical. And that's wearing, why. And he's yeah, but he also he's wearing a fucking ski mask. To, as a disguise without anyone seeing his face but the also, bank heist was pretty dope it was i like how it was done practical but, when he was getting shot by a bunch of yeah. bullets and it was not cgi i thought bro, this was really- bro that was my favorite part of the episode where we just go straight into the fight with jonathan and clark oh my god that was an epic practical fight that felt like a terminator style yeah, and they beat the crap out of each other too. Like they go through walls and stuff and things. A bunch of concrete. <laughs> yeah, it was phenomenal. And the coolest part was when Clark just rips his fucking shirt off. Like, come on, they've been the writers want him to show off his ripped fucking chest, but it was it got a little bit dark. And he just tells them that he makes sure that he, I he will I will never forget who my real father is. Oh my god, how fucking dark that scene was. <laughs> Damn. But he made the moral choice because it, no matter how bad he is on Red Crypt tonight, he's not a killer. He still follows the moral code of not killing. And he made a choice to destroy that ring. I yeah, mean, yeah, because he could have so fucked far, his father. Uh, oh yeah, he could have ended him right he there. He could have homelandered his father. Mm-hmm. And, and then, then, then when Morgan Edge comes back with reinforcements, we get the scene where Clark slices himself open with the kryptonite. That was gnarly. I did not see that one. I know. Like, how sharp would that kryptonite rock was? Like, he was able to have that enough pressure to cut himself. Did that same bother you, by the way? Like, because he's sitting there telling him, you might be faster than a speeding bullet, but we're not. Like, but your parents are. But he can't get both. But he can't get both of them at the same time because they're literally close to the head. The moment he starts running, they would pull the trigger at an instant. But I did, I did like how he cut them. He said, "What the like?" He waited until they're like, "What the hell are you doing?" Like, what What the the hell hell? is this? (laughs) They waited until after he cut himself and blood. The other fell down because he had no idea that the blood vial was originated from him. Because we found out later that yeah, that was the same blood that Lionel had in his vault the whole time, and they destroyed it. I just thought that was clever, though. That uh, that like Clark, he's like, like he he exposes himself to Morgan Edge. I mean, yeah, he exposes oh. his weakness. Yeah, he showed him the weakness. He didn't notes. expose him. Oh, yeah, he, he exposed himself. <laughs> he expo- Clark exposes himself to Morgan Edge. I wrote that in my notes. I'm like, <laughs> he exposed himself. He exposes weakness. And I wrote, he exposed himself. I'm like, Clark, he does this in my notes. Clark exposes himself to Morgan Edge. Like, yeah, <laughs> Clark. No, Clark had the urge to fucking expose himself to Morgan. Hey, Morgan, what do you think about this? <laughs> hey, Mister Edge. He's exposing himself, guards. Oh my god! Someone, someone, that would have totally. That would have like. Someone really, shoot it now. Well, now that that would have totally like diffused the situation. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. If he dropped his britches, no one and no one would be expecting that. He'll just go. He'll just go like this. Oh. <laughs> He's just flash. Just fucking flash himself. <laughs> Everybody would be shooting at him because they're like, "Oh my god, he's naked! Get back!" <laughs> he'd, just, he'd be like, "Yeah, oh, you know what? He's naked." You know that actually would have that would have made this. 
fucking hilarious. <laughs> that would take a, them off guard and they're like, what, what the fuck? Just to fuck with them. <laughs> what did Morgan Edge see when Clark Kent exposed himself this week on Unsolved Mystery? <laughs> Um, this week on Unsolved Mystery, did he actually? How did he react when he exposed himself? Uh, he would have probably made the same face too. Be like, <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> so okay, the like, face. okay then. And, yeah, and his white blood cells are off the charts according according to Chloe. Well, I always say, like, I always thought Lex Luthor was a metahuman in the comics, but he was just like because I think, but instead of him being like Ebony Powers, he's just like really clever. Mm-hmm. Well, I and think I think, made him more and I think that because he's able to like survive mortal injuries when Clark was not around. I mean, yeah, occasionally Clark always saves him all the time without him even knowing it. And there was, a, and I don't know if I remember correctly, but I did my research on some of the iterations of the comic book with Lex Luthor that he was got exposed to kryptonite and it made him bald from the because it was so radioactive. I don't know if it, if that happened. I could be wrong. I mean, you can probably correct me on that one. Um, Lex Luthor, like like Lex Luthor, and a lot of times, yeah, he grew. He like, yeah, that is has been in the comics and stuff. You are right about that. I will say Lex Luthor, though, I do think that I do like that. That whole thing, like Lex is like, maybe I am, maybe, maybe, maybe I am I a freak. Am. You know, he starts investigating him that, that the wreck again now. That like that's not and like he, oh god. Yeah, and he asks his and he asks his, and he asks his father like, have I ever been sick? At, like after the meteor shower, have I been a sick a day in my life? And he said, know, outside of asthma, no. So I feel like there's a kernel of truth to this. I mean, it would it, it would make sense to me anyway. Mm-hmm. That pissed Lionel off to that. Like, right, Lionel went to Chloe and he basically he basically threatened her. Like he made her. A he threat. did. He and did. it wasn't even a threat. It was like promise. He said, like, you know, no, it was not a threat. It was a promise. You ever do that again? <laughs> no, it's not. You ever does get one my family again? He goes, I will make your. He says, I, he will take her out of the equation. Because like he Lionel is not somebody to mess with, especially you mess with his son, you're messing with him. You know, because the only person that's allowed to mess with Lex is Lionel. Yeah. Which also I do like the scene when Ban builds the kryptonite bullets. Like you show him how him making the bullet for Clark. And then Clark's on the farm, and then you see Van, and all of a sudden he shoots, and Clark sees the bullet catch, and it goes right through and hits Clark, and he goes down. Oh my, oh my God. And Clark's like, ah. And John was insane. That, that was insane scene. sequence. That whole scene, and when Jonathan digs the bullet out with the the wire cutters, I was just oh like, yeah, how was oh, this allowed in two thousand? And, and they had to use a, a knife to sterilize the blade to have him dig it through the bullet. Yeah, yeah, because I kind of do so tough, so they had to improvise. I kind of wish though that Van would have took another shot. Like if I just kind of wish, I was thinking, oh, what would have been cool if Van was trying? Like when Jonathan, you see John, all of a sudden that some more gunshots rang out, and Jonathan jumps to the ground and tries to go to get Clark, and he's dri- he just ju- jumps over Clark to protect him as li- like Van is shooting up the farm, and then Van like thinks he got him, so then Van leaves. I thought that would have been cool because I'm like, Van, you don't know if you got Clark or not. You should take another shot just to make sure that you got him. You know because. Yeah, you see him go down, but like you don't. But then know he has to. But then he has to like clock it every two because he has a sniper rifle, and that would have taken a lot of time. And he fell right into the ground. I know that Matt is serious about this recording because he's drinking ice cold water and he just took two ice breakers, so his breath is as frosty as the Antarctic. Come on, let me freshen your breath. Well, uh, let's uh, let's oh, say. Oh look, oh look, it's Arnold Schwarzenegger's Mr. Freeze. Oh, I know. I, oh, now what I get the dinosaurs, the Ice Age. Oh, you're gonna be like, Me's I'm Mr. White Christmas, I'm Mr. Snow. Cool party, it's a cold town. Allow me to break the ice. Come, come on, on Lana, 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 come on, sing, sing, sing louder, sing. No, but let's uh, now we gotta cut that clip in the damn episode. Come on, sing <laughs> louder, come on, sing. sing. <laughs> I was like, Ryan's like, I gotta put that clip down or shit. Oh no, I was gonna put it in there anyway, so it's no skin off my nose. And I also love the the when that truck flips. It, like, there's something about the Kent family. They get anywhere near cars, it's just not gonna end well for them. Like, there's always a car out, crash. So... There's always a trucks flying over. Practical. Yeah. Also, but that car crash was just excellent. 
Also, they must have great insurance in that truck because almost every episode, that same truck is getting destroyed. Like, didn't we see two episodes in, like, the finale? That truck was upside down. And didn't we see, like, the truck get flipped over? Uh, didn't the truck blow up at one point? If I remember like, correctly, if I remember correctly, was that the red truck or a blue truck? I can't remember. It was, was it was the red truck. So yeah, it, it had to be the red truck. Yeah. Season one. Like, did, they, yeah. did they get that shit? Did they pay insurance to get it fucking repaired? I certainly it's hope been so. our family for generations. I don't care if it gets blown up. We're getting it again. <laughs> all this scene needed was J.K. Simmons walking out there being like, we've seen it all because we've seen it all. We are farmers. Bum, ba, dum, bum, 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 bum. Talk to farmers. We know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Oh my God. Ryan, add that in there. Add that a- after like, the truck, <laughs> after the truck crashes, just add like the J.K. Simmons voiceover of that scene. Oh, you bet it's going in. You bet it's going <laughs> in. He just, my, I love how he speeds up and he goes, but I never And he just like, and he has to use the money to bust it, to buy a bus. The way he was running, the way he was just running, it, the moment he stopped speeding, he's like, I, was like, I I could I'm sorry I could not take it seriously. It was just so funny I could not keep a straight face. It was just, it was I was funny. laughing so hard at that. And then Jonathan said a bus stop. Or when or when the scene where he's trying to lift off the tractor and he fucking threw it fucking thirty <laughs> feet in the air and conveniently hits near Perry White. How it convenient hits, was that? Like, like, and they did this. Your and tractor just fell out of the sky. I explained it. Oh, it fell off a truck. <laughs> it is not an explanation. It's a punchline. <laughs> He does this, he just goes. <laughs> just dumps the fucking liquor from his fast. That was, that was that was funny. That was really oh, funny. perfect, perfect. Well, uh Jacob is chomping at the bit and to talk about uh to talk. I'm sorry, about I'm gonna defend the shit out of this. Round one fight. <laughs> All right, you you two lads fight. Jacob, go. This episode is stupid, okay? The whole point of this shit, the whole point of this stupid-ass episode is, like, they're just doing, like, the same shit comedies do during the whole thing. Like, Boy Meets World did it. Freaking uh, Sweet Life of Zack and Cody did it. Like, do you know why this 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 thing is First popular? of all, that's a little unfair to compare to those sitcom they're shows. Sitcoms. That are not, they're, not, they're, not, they're, not, they're not real. They weren't flashbacks to anything. They were fake. They were make-believe that they should And that's made, why, because no one's going to This is nothing like compared to this. <laughs> No one's going to take that shit seriously. Because like, they know people aren't going to take that seriously. But this is like a show that's so good. It's like, why would you even do it? Why not cast older actors? That would make it better. Why would you cast Tom Welling to play his dad? I'm like, he looks nothing like Jarrell. We've seen Jarrell. Okay? Which we haven't seen him. But I'm, saying, we've seen, I'm like, if you look at Jarrell, look at Tom Welling, you're like, he looks nothing like him. I don't know why the fuck they did that in season two. This is just stupid. This is utter bullshit. And on top of that, the whole point of like, oh, he fell in love with Lana, and so Lana, he, Jarrell fell in love with Lana's grandmother, meaning, oh, Clark and Lana would always meant to be together. It's basically saying, fuck you to Lois Lane in the future, and I'm just like, oh, wow. So I'm like, Lois Lane, I'm sure we'll appreciate that in the future, because the fucking writers are trying to be like, Let's see, Clark and Lana, they're always meant to be together. Clark and Lana, they're always meant to be together. And I'm like, you realize there's someone else coming in the future, right? You don't realize this shit, <laughs> like... I yeah, think you're going a little mythology. bit of a too far it's... stretch. It's not that it's only had they were meant to be together. Yeah, there's going to be some times that they just weren't meant to be. Even if they had been in love, it, it just things, chaos always happens around them. And, and, they, and apparently they weren't meant to be. If it weren't, if, if it weren't for her, uh, uh, fucking Louise getting killed off, Clark would never have been born in the first place and wouldn't have met Laura later in the years. Okay, I'll, gi- I'll give you that. So she, but... Laura was literally the lowest lane if you think about it. But also, if you think about this, so basically in season one... It just wasn't meant to be. It just wasn't meant to. But if you think about it, in season one, he crashes there randomly in that field, and it's the Kents who miraculously find him. And it was like, you know... And, you know, it's it's such a great moment because it's like they found him and he found them, and it's beautiful. But then it's like, okay, the Kents were always meant to find Lana Lang. Like, not Lana Lang, sorry. The Kent was always meant to find the baby Kal-El. So basically saying as though, okay, well, this was always meant to be. Okay, so the kids were miraculously going to be in this field at this exact same time on this exact day. 
Rather, okay, why don't you just send baby's callus coordinates to the fucking farm so that way it would make it easier rather than a field in the middle of nowhere? Because what if, uh, what if like, you know, Pete Ross's dad would have been there? Or what if Chloe Sullivan's dad would have been there? What if Lionel Luther would have been there? You know, it's just like there's so many things that's like, it just feels like, okay, it's basically trying to, it feels like they're trying to put something else in there, trying to make it seem like, like it's like when they did Amazing Spider-Man. And how, like, they were trying to say, oh, Peter Parker was always meant to be bitten by Spider and become Spider Man. Yeah, like diff- no, yeah, but the difference is, like, Clark Kent was always meant to be Superman. He yeah. he always was, he was born to be Superman. But he was not always meant Peter to be Parker was never meant to be Spider Man. He was just a, a fucking ordinary guy who happened to gotten bit and wasn't chosen to, but the destined to, to become the savior. Clark was always destined to be, to be Superman. So it's nothing compared to Spider Man. Well, they're trying to say is Clark's always meant to be a Kent. Like Clark, oh, this was destiny. Well, yeah, because he chose the right family. Because he doesn't want to have the fucking have the wrong family and being raised by awful parents. He met the Kim family and thought, like, this is the right kid for him. So yeah, this episode is a bunch of crap. It's not the worst, but man, this episode got off on the wrong foot with me, considering that literally this dude like got into a fight with like a 40-year-old man over a snow globe. I was just sitting there like, 40-year-old dude, you look like you have disposable income. You can just buy the thing. But no, it it just, like, we got to get the Seth train going, I guess. But I don't know. What did you think, Jacob? Well, you know, also, that was the stupidest thing ever. It's like, Michael Rosenbaum said, I'm going to, by the way, I'm going to send the clip to you, or I'm going to at least send the episode. I'm going to send the episode, and we'll find the clip. But at the beginning of the episode of the talk bill, this episode, Michael Rosenbaum goes, this episode is like when you, he said, you go into the writer's room and they pitch this and you're like, nah, what else you got? See, in the pitch, I would have thought immediately, nope, moving on. <laughs> Who's got the next idea? <laughs> Snow globe, kryptonite in there? Yeah, no. To dry, I was like, you piece of crap. First, By the I way, know. let's talk about that scene. Can we talk about that scene? Because yes, I was can. like, okay, when the fuck did he become Spider-Man? Because <laughs> he just, just, he goes, I'll be, he said, do you love me? He goes, yeah. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Really, he's a ma- really he's a fucking mastermind of parkour, and he's on the side of the what? truck like that. Yeah, I was like, well, why did the cops not catch him? Like they were not he's on that the far away the from the road. Again, he's, on every- the- he's like, he's right there. He's right. He's there. literally right there. Go get the chase fucking- after this dude. He's like right there, and they just try to miss line. Put your hands up. He's right there in the fucking truck. He's hanging out like this. He's not disguising himself. He's like this. And as, and as when Lana was in a jail cell, she just told uh, that bullshit story of, about having a, that that Seth has a brother and grand to throw Clark off trail. Which I don't know what the hell of that was that about. I wonder uh, if they're. I wonder if the brother is related to the same dude from the diner in Bloodhaven from the Zero episode. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, when also, wouldn't that be a twist? Then it's the. I I just want to go back one second to the diner to the fucking truck scene. Didn't it seem crazy? Remind you of Spider Man three when the new Goblin Harry sitting up high in the bus drives by. Oh, and- oh yeah, when it drives by and he suddenly he can have superhuman speed to disappear. It's well, like it happens in a lot of cliche villainous <laughs> roles that they always disappear instantly whenever there's a truck nearby. It's so cliche. I think this is as good a place as any to get into Morgan Edge because, oh my god. Oh, man, is this? Like, I, I, I understand, and Jacob, we talked about this off air. Like, Rutger Hauer was allegedly difficult to work with and they couldn't get him back. Okay, fine. Who found this random schlub to be, like, Morgan Edge? I'm like, like, what are we doing here, people? If you wanted to kill him off, just say, oh, he met his end, he's sleeping with the fishes. Right, like, they killed him off, and then they had to bring him back because they had to... I'm like, why? Why just, like, say, like, hey? I mean, that just is so, so stupid. Like, oh, I just... I, I hated that so much. I, I didn't mind that. that. I didn't I didn't think he was that bad. I thought he did a really good job acting w- with Morgan Edge and trying to fill in the shoes with the he, other he actor. You, and they had to come up and they had to come up with excuses of from a different actor. Instead of just saying that yeah, he's a different actor portraying Morgan Edge, but then they have to come up with a story where yeah, he had a plastic surgery and he's trying to change his identity, change his appearance, which was a little bit silly of far I will say in defense of that actor it, it 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 does look like well, if Rugger Howard got plastic surgery, it looked like he would become look like this guy. 
yeah, I buy it. I bought I, into I buy it. that. So, and that, I think no, that bringing back Morgan Edge was kind of like helping pushing further in the story. It, it that that would make a little bit more sense and trying to get and trying to get dirt on getting uh, bleh, when getting having Lex getting Morgan Edge to confess to what he that the murder of his grandparents and that Lionel was responsible for. Yeah, which also I thought you know I kind of like also thought you know like um. When it was the kill, him dying in the episode before, you know, was being killed by Lionel Lewis's security team. That was much more cooler than him dying by Lex just shooting the car and then Clark going. I thought I thought that shot was dope. The, oh the my! Shot was I mean, dope, it's still, like, it, yeah, it was silly, that but that was pretty dope. I mean, how he went out was a little bit stupid. I wish they could have handled his death a little bit better. That but car crash, shot though, of yeah, that's... but that car crash with Clark just simply just stops the car it's with so his good elbow. They use it as crushed... the intro for C- for Tom Welling in a couple of seasons. Later. They they do, I do. A couple of seasons later, they will use that Another intro. Which I will say this though, Tom Welling said that the guy that they got to replace Rugger, so they said when Rugger was doing it, they said it was kind of, he was difficult to work with. Was he? You know? I didn't know yeah. he was difficult to work with. I said he was very difficult to work with. Rugger was, but as for as for um, what's his name. You know, as for the other guy, he said he was a pleasant guy to work with. Mm. They said he was very pleasant. And they said he was really nice and he was a really fun guy to work with. They said had no issue with him compared to Rugger, who they did have issues with. So, you know, like he got mad because he was trying to smoke a cigarette out there and you're like, you can't smoke here. And he got pissed off. At, they got Rugger Howard. That's what Tom Wellen was telling the story on Talkville about. Yeah, his, yeah the out. actor who replaced him is Patrick Bergen. Yeah. Yeah. But they, they did say that there was a sick incident that happened on set where Rugger Howard had to smoke one to smoke a cigarette. And like he pulled a cigarette out, and they're like, "You can't smoke on set." And then he gets mad, and starts screaming at one of the producers. And so they so, got into a they got into a big fight and lost yeah. their temper. Yeah, let's yeah. Look- so this so Patrick Bergen he he's been in a few movies. He's been in Robin Hood. He's been in Sleeping with the Enemy with San, with um Julia Roberts, and he's been in Patriot Games. Oh wow! So pretty good credits there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Did you also? I like the scene. I really like the scene though when he's holding the baby. Goes, Shh. Oh man, that, to that me was, was like, that was crazy. So messed up. And so let me ask you this, Ryan. What did you think of the whole Julian thing? What what's your thanks thoughts on that? If they introduced it in the episode, like I thought it would have been a little contrived, but there is like a previous, like a oh yeah, they've brought this up before. So it was like a I could connect with that. So I liked it. And also, did you like how at the end how he's uh, Lex I when he he sees Clark, he's like, Clark, how did you do that? And then you see Clark, and then all of a sudden the doctor's coming. He's in a straight jacket, and they play that Johnny Cash song. To see if I still feel only thing that's real. What have I become? Who's away in the year? I should get some sleep. Did you feel like want to cry when you were looking at that? You know, any use of Johnny Cash's hurt is a 10 on 10 for me. But that whole ending where Lana is in the hospital bed, which, by the way, bit of a sidebar, Lana gets her leg completely crushed by a horse. And she's like laid up in bed and she has the depressing line of, I need to stay away from you, which that'll break your heart. And then like Lex is full on straitjacket mode and he's in the rubber room. And like Lionel's looking at him through the double sided mirror, and then Clark's looking at Lana, and it's all soundtracked by Hurt by Johnny Cash. It was a great transition, great transition quote, scene. And Lionel's like, hey, he right. loves his son more than he loves himself, but he knew that he had to be, he had to get him committed, try to have him have, have his memory wiping from his six weeks of not knowing anything about Lionel being responsible for the death of his parents. He, the, the, if, if, it, if he did not care about his son, he would have had him killed. You he know, would have I, done it, but he didn't want anything pretty, to happen to him, so he had to figure out an alternative. That right there shows you that Lionel does care about Lex. If he's willing not to kill him, but just hurt, like, you know, he's like, yes, I'm doing this to, so that way I don't have to kill you. I so desperately want to get to Asylum, so let's, uh, I think we've covered just about everything. So can I say I one more thing to... about a, uh, Shattered? Before yeah. Before we get some? There, I, there, the only thing I had an issue with is at the end, Michael Rosenbaum is just like this going, like this, like, <laughs> it seems like he's trying to laugh. And then John Glover is giving this Oscar-worthy performance of like, my son. Like, and then John Michael Rosamond is playing it like as if you're like a crazy. They just don't. And Michael, play crazy. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. 
Papa, Papa, are you there? Papa, Papa, are you there? <laughs> Like, I just like saying, like, you could tell Michael must have, must have knew John Glover was on the other side of the glass, and he's just trying to make him laugh, and they're just like, I didn't think they were going to keep this take. I thought they were going to keep another take. And so they just kept that take to fuck with Michael Russell. I, I don't know if that's true. I'm just saying, that's what it feels like, is my, John Glover's giving this Oscar, like, like he wants to cry doing this. And then when you got John, he's like, Michael Russell was like, Papa. Like, you know, just like, that to me, I just thought, like, I kind of wish you would have played it differently where he's like, like he's like, cause Lex in his head knows that he's right. He's not crazy. So he should have played it that way instead of playing it like. Ian, yeah. you got Eric returning and then you got the yeah. meteor freak hater. Which, yeah. By, by the Jonathan. way, Jacob, Jacob, when uh, when uh, Jonathan Taylor Thomas dropped the uh, the KKV line, I With mean, Klu Klux thought, van. yeah, he said the Ku Klux fan isn't Ku Klux van. <laughs> I was like, damn, he's referencing when he says he thought of me, he's referencing, you know, because we made the joke earlier in the episode, not that he's right. Like the guy's racist. racist like that. I, yeah, I didn't. I, I cannot believe I forgot that he said that to him when he meets up with them. Well, he met a uh, he met a pretty fitting end when Ian turned into a double and he like just strangled him with. I the, bet like, he was. Oh so yeah, no, they just too. like broke his neck from that weight he was so when they crushed too, him. He's like, because they're not gonna team up with him. He's a racist. He's like, yeah, hey, he's, he's a racist. He's a beast. Fun. It's every person for themselves. They're 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 all they have a common interest to take out Clark and as they're going to take it out of that Bell Reeve, but they're gonna use each other. It yeah, was like, nice. I mean, obviously this they're criminals. They're like, look, you know, we're yeah. we're basically our own. And also, guys. why how does there a weight room in the asylum? There's a weight room? There's and weight rooms in prisons. So oh, no, no, in prisons, that's true. But I didn't yeah, know that they like have weight asylums, rooms in, in they asylum. Have, they have like padded rooms. I like, don't you like don't you think that will be a little bit dangerous, especially with mental patient that could be dangering to someone? I mean, it's it's not like I mean, I don't know. I'm just I'm I don't know anything because I take that with the giant grand salt. I'm just a little nitpicky. No, no, fair enough, fair enough. But it was nice to see Sean Ashmore back because out of the three, he was my favorite. The boombox like, guy. Episode. We reference him three, three times. Oh, the boombox. Yeah, he's the boombox guy. <laughs> I love that scene clip. That is my favorite scene. When he, <laughs> I, I wish he would have had a boombox literally whenever he got, if he would have just like walked by with Clark with a boombox playing or something. No, but <laughs> I... I love. I mean, I mean, but I love the idea that we're seeing these meteor freaks that he came, that Clark put help yeah. help put in them in Bell Reeve, and how not, now there's a little bit more consequences when they want their little payback against Clark for what for he, what he's responsible for because he's responsible for putting them in there in the first place. I like I how the security guard tells him. I love how this show rewards guy. you for paying attention because, like, when I saw those people, I'm like, "Hey, I remember you," and I was thinking to myself, "I hope they do something with you," and they do, and it's great. I'll uh, I'll be fair though. I'll talk about my favorite scene in which Clark is trying to focus his hearing, and he's turning on all these things and noises to to just focus up his hearing. And then Jonathan helps him. And he's like, "Focus on the sound of my voice." And that whole scene that was oh, that awesome. was so good because he's so learned because he needed to learn how to to control his super hearing because now his super hearing has manifested. It is this is another of Man of Steel, like with Martha Kent does, it. and I, I'm like, that's where Man of Steel got it from. That scene right there. Because Focus on my voice. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. It was like so on the nose. I'm like, this was a man of steel. And I'm like, but I think Smallville did it great because Jonathan's like, focus on my voice. I'm like, that <clears throat> right there was so good. I'm like, that well, to me what was What the difference a- is between with Man of Steel, because he's like, you got to focus on what you really want to see, not just like focus on like be able to hear me. You got to like focus on what yeah. you really want to see because your senses are all over the place and it's overwhelming for him in, in the scene. Hey, we're gonna kill your son if you don't let this guy go free. I, I, I like that aspect of it. How it how it turned out though with uh, them kidding, <laughs> he just says, "Me hey, get in a truck," and I'm like, "What are you like?" And then he's like, eh. and then all of a sudden, it <laughs> and just back. grabs him out in, in the like, middle of nowhere in broad daylight. You don't wear a ski <laughs> mask or not. You're just you literally. What yeah, like why are you? Sh- why would you risk showing your face unless you have no intention of keeping him alive? And he's driving around town in the vehicle. He kidnapped him too. It's like, well, it's just a blind guy here. So I mean, I think I'm pretty good. Yeah, but, and no, no one's gonna notice. Like, Nobody's gonna fucking notice. Like I'm just like, are you serious? You're you're kidnapping somebody. At least wear a ski mask. And he's got a so powerful. Guys, and he's got a powerful criminal defense lawyer. <laughs> 
How the I just, fuck like, that so many things. You're not like, you're not Wilson Fisk, bro. This guy's like, I'm bald though, so I could be. <laughs> hey, Vanessa. Rob, he How dare you my Vanessa? The guy did this, and they put the ski mask on. He did not go wait. I would have thought it been clever if he would have put the mask on. Then the guy goes in and goes, eh, and then you know, and jerks off his throat to make the loud sound. <laughs> and <then it> <laughs> I mean, that's what he's doing in the episode. He's going, eh, eh. just have j- just jerking off his throat. <laughs> and all of a sudden, one at one point, he's like, "I'm sorry, this is." He's trying to do this. I'm gonna get you, Clark. I'm sorry. I'm just having performance issues. <laughs> just like, just, Jacob, what about? All this episode was missing was every time they fought someone young, Mortal Kombat! <laughs> Round one, <laughs> fight! Yeah, oh that, my god, that... Ryan, Ryan, when they start, when you show the clip of them fighting, put that, put Mortal Kombat, the Mortal Kombat theme in that background of, of the fight. Oh scene. yeah. First of all, yeah, the school fight was pretty cool and all, but my God, you would they would have gotten arrested. That's right, I put suspended. that in my thing. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> you got yeah, suspended? It was, it Bitch, just, you pulled an axe out on her. Because everybody's was... kung fu fighting. Everyone act like they're in the Mortal Kombat fucking scene. You even assaulted Ian, three even fucking Even fucking Adam pretty much knows kung fu. Oh, I guess. And, oh, where'd you learn how to fight? Oh, I guess Gotham, I just I mean, not Jackie Gotham. Chan movie. Yeah, he, he is anger. He is rage. He is butt man. <laughs> joking about that the other night like he's like he it's like he quacks like a batman he he moves like a batman he sounds like a batman what is he not batman because warner brothers wouldn't allow it but they did say like that that this episode kind of set him up as batman but then i think the next episode they kind of went away from that direction because they couldn't do it they i think by this set by the next episode they were like you cannot use him he's not batman you cannot make him because yeah, I think Christian the writers Batman. at the time were going to try to, like, set him up as a version of Batman until they had to change and... that. Because legally, the Warner Brothers would not allow that on television. Because they did not want him to make him more of a knockoff from Batman. I guarantee you, if they were, I guarantee you. Because when the boy touches him in Hereafter, it almost felt like, oh, yeah, it was going to be him sitting with bats or flying around them or something with a cape. And I guarantee oh, you that yeah. would have been it. So, Yeah. <laughs> Uh, also, one one note before we dive into the meat of the episode. The episode starts with the song 100 Years by Five for Fighting. I'm 15 for a moment. It's legit one of my favorite songs. It's, it's a great so- fucking song, bro. Great song. It's, <laughs> great it's way to jog. Song. Great way for a jog in, during gym, during PE. <laughs> I mean, it's a very sad song. I li- no, I'm not gonna lie. I think I remember playing that song when I was in gym yeah. in junior high. That I because it reminded me of that episode. Like, oh, I might as well do the same. Yeah, and the previous episode ended with uh, the reason by Hoobastank, which is another one of my favorite songs. Yeah, so another this- good. So, what do you think? This show just hacked my YouTube music playlist, and I have no problem with that. That, but, that, uh, that whole thing when I watched that episode that I just that made me start in my home like fucking MySpace playlist. <laughs> like he's coming from like he's got no ammunition to fire. I mean the dude literally is the first guy in this show outside of Jonathan and Martha Kent who knows the secret. For once in my life, I finally found something that I'm truly good at. And for once in my life, I finally get to feel what you feel like every single day. And ever since we were kids. Even before I knew your secret, I've always been walking in your shadow. There is logic in what he says. So he's had to carry a metaphorical burden, like like Atlas carrying the world. So so when he blows up at Clark, I'm like, I hate to see this, but at the same time, I mean, it's like it's not exactly like he's coming from a place of like of like being like a dick. Like he's he's justified in his anger. He doesn't want to live in Clark's shadow because he even mentioned, like, even before I knew your secret, I've always been living in your shadow and I got no sense of purpose. Even when I know your secret and I'm glad that I know it's not a bad place to be, but I want to do something that I love, that I'm passionate about, that I'm good at. I get to be special and he wants to be seen. He wants to have an audience. He wants to be their champion because Clark gets to do things that no one can dream of. And he's been a little bit jealous of Clark. That's true. Uh how lazy though a nickname for his like Pete the Boss Ross. The Boss Ross. That really rhymes. It reminds me of Boss Hog from Dukes of Hazard. Like 
for some reason Dante has the police in their back pocket and why they never got caught and arrested. He also paid racing. 20 grand. Wouldn't it make more sense? Like, how would he have a cop in his pocket if he owes somebody 20 grand? Like, literally, you're a street racer, a mid-level street racer, dude. Come on. Like, how Yeah, you're a you mid-level street racer, and somehow you can be able to get the cops in their back pocket and never get caught. How does that make any sense? It's like, no, go away, bro. I'm going to arrest you. Go. That's extortion. Like, seriously. I, but, uh, yeah, that, to me, I just irked me. I'm like, come on. Then, I do like that he beat up Pete, thinking Pete was the one. Oh, yeah. you No, I love that they did it off screen and shown the reveal in the shadow in the barn. Seen him all beat up with all with, with bruises and, and blood all over his face. Oh, and the performance! What a performance on Sam Jones right there! How him like freaking out and then begging Clark to steal the money and get and pay Dante off. Otherwise, his family are going to get murdered, and he'll be the last one. And if you keep beating him up, he's just going to come back at him. So he's the desperate. Sh the sheriff is so over dramatic in that scene too, and she's like, "Mr. Kent, next time I see it, if he said if you say it's raining outside." I better see some water or something. Like I better that, see you know? some. I better see some water. <laughs> Isn't come this on, the same on. police force? Isn't this the same police force that arrested Jonathan Kent for murder on a rumor? Am I? I'm old enough to remember that. <laughs> yes. I mean, why, also, why beat up Pete and not kill him? Because if he ratted you out and you beat him up, guess who he's gonna report? You don't think he's gonna go back to the police and say, "Look at this, they assaulted battery me. They assaulted and battery." Look, you can look at my face. See, look. It just raises too many questions. But uh, but we get to learn a little more with a bit of a revelation about Adam Knight. He's basically the Winter Soldier. I'm going to call him the summer. The plot is thickening with Adam. He is and he Batman. Is spying, I mean, but he is spying man. on Clark and Lana the whole time. He's a silent guardian, a watchful protector. The dark. He night. is, but man. No, 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 no. But man. we literally every time we mention Adam Knight, we should put butt man. The, like no, 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 no. But man. But man. Because no, he's not Batman. Batman. Kind of serious like though. Knight. Like at the end of this episode, he's literally in the chair with the things in his head, like the Winter Soldier. This is a better Flash concept than the Flash movie we got last year. Like, like <laughs> oh boy, you're so right, you're so right, Ryan. I mean, think think Fuck about it for two man. seconds. <laughs> think about it for two man. seconds. It's better than the Flash movie by a country mile. I mean, many things are. But uh, Jacob, what did you think of the episode? Uh, well, um, I actually thought that this episode was way better than the Flash movie. Um, and uh, not only that, I thought you know Matt can go fuck himself. Um, also <laughs> that. Yeah, we get a dumb moment at the start of the episode from the sheriff who is like, oh, Lana, oh, Miss Lang, you must have done a prank call. Like, yeah, in the year of our Lord, 2004, she totally prank called herself, Sheriff. You are smart. You know what? The next time you have a thought, let it go. <laughs> oh, watch this. I'm going to fuck with Clark on my own. <laughs> Just like... Oh, I can't wait to fuck with Clark right now. <laughs> call the suicide hotline. Yeah, like, and what world do they think Lon? I guess because maybe a couple episodes back she was a thief, like when she robbed Lex's and like robbed Lex's installment. Well, to be yeah. fair, she wasn't really herself. She was I under know. the influence for that like, magnet, Megan but boy. She know. But she doesn't know that. You know, the sheriff just thinks, oh, these are just a bunch of hooligans, and I'm the law. She thinks basically she's Chuck Norris and Walker, Texas Ranger. She's the <laughs> female Texas Walker Ranger. Adam's running around like he's got the virus from I Am Legend. <laughs> All it needs is Will Smith chasing him around in, in Smith's Ford Mustang with his dog. <laughs> yeah. And then when he sees him, he slaps him to death. Besides, like, what are you going to do? Even if you do escape, you're going to die in 12 hours. Like, like, what the hell was the point? Also, also, I just thought, you know what? And you know, R Ryan, that's why I said I was so disappointed with this arc because he went almost like he was basically supposed to be Batman and now he became dead man. A dead butt man. Deflated but, yeah. man. No, no deflated no, no, man. No, 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 dead man. But. No, that's the Undertaker. But yeah, is th this character just 
feels so weird to me because like you were telling me like he's like he's kind of like the batman of this show but they couldn't do anything with him legally so they just make him a monster they they try to turn him into a just, bane how about just make him a kill make him a psycho killer stalker wouldn't it have been they better if they made him bane like if his name was like edward but i'm sure they're probably like no we're not doing that and one of the problems I have with this episode, like how did Chloe was able to break into that facility of the Luther Corp? And then she just gets like, sprayed. Matt, she gets sprayed, and it gives her these powers from these like, from the kryptonite the fog is- shower, toxic like fog shower. <laughs> just, anyway, it breaks in like give him superpowers, everyone. Give him superpowers, superpowers. And she it was able to <laughs> escape with no sweat. They have worse fucking guards in the Luther Corp facility. Like you're breaking into a highly secure facility, a high school kid could be able to break in. I don't know. Maybe I did. Maybe I just plain missed this. But you, surely you would think that with like the toxic gas, there'd be like some kind of a sign being like, "Do not enter this room. Toxic gas in here." I like in the words of John B. Chris. What? I feel like that needs a sign. We all like to talk about the episode and then give our scores at the end before transitioning into the next one. We're going to do the reverse of that for the Memoria episode because we all talked about it. We all agreed on the same score. I'm giving this one a 10 out of 10. Jacob, you're giving this one a 10 out of 10. And Matt, you're a 10 out of 10 as well. Like I said, this is the best episode of this show so far. There is so much going on with this. It's all just, it's all beautiful. It really is. It's dark. It's just it's handled so incredibly well. And I mean, just, I am not entirely sure where to start other than let's just talk about young Lex who looks like Corey Feldman from when he cut his hair at the end of Friday the 13th, the final chapter. Like he looks so much like Corey Feldman from that movie, but just the flashbacks just ripped my heart into pieces. They were just done so well. Jacob, what do you think? You know, I'm actually, I said, you know who here, the kid, little kid reminds me of, actually, I was watching? Ant-Man, the villain from Ant-Man, uh, Darren Cross. Will Darren close. Cross, yeah. Well, before he turns into MODOK, but we don't talk about that. Jesus! Uh, we we don't do that here. Which, by, I'm just saying, this literally, I was literally looking at this going, I don't know, this kid looks nothing like Michael Rosenbaum. Like, I don't believe he has, I'm like, Corey Stolt, maybe. But, like... Michael Rosenbaum, I'm like, I don't see it. Like, I'm just like, I just see a kid, a bald kid that goes, Julian, Julian. And I'm just like, I'm just like, all, all I keep thinking is, man, if they were to cast Corey Stoll, man, this would have just been spot on. <laughs> but then I'm like, I, I will say, I do like this episode to where it like, you, you see these flashbacks with Lex, especially like the last flashback where you're just like, that is, this episode, we've been hyping this episode up all season. And I was worried that like we might have hyped it too much to where you're like, man, I was so looking forward to like a ten. We, we like were hyping it like all like all the way through all three seasons from the, the beginning, from the beginning of the series. This like, is the, oh this god, we cannot wait for you to know what's gonna happen. And we were so fucking like pissed that we had to wait a little while for him to get to that point. It- also, yeah, but- it reminded me of like fan of the Phantom Menace uh, Coruscant, you know, when Coruscant. Mm-hmm. It kind of reminded me of that. Although, yeah, like, all the ships look like dildos. We all know that. And now for something completely different. That, yes. <laughs> Zack Snyder's even admitted, yes, that, you know, that was a joke, you know, we put in there. Yes, the ships do, the Zod spaceship, you know, I'm not talking about the prison cells. When, you know what I'm talking about? And when he says, yeah. I will find him, and then, like... I will find him! And, yeah, and they get in a frozen tube that looks penises. like a penis shape. <laughs> and then they go on frozen dildos up in the space. They're frozen, dild- to- they're frozen dildos up in there. This and looks like a right small penis. And the portal looks like a fucking vajayjay that deflowers them inside. <laughs> it's like, Zack Snyder's like, <laughs> it's like, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> they, and Warner Brothers like, I like, I like it. And they're like, they have no idea. They're going to make us change and they'll make us go back and just change the scene if, if they find out. Don't say nothing until the, when it hits DVD. And then we'll say something. And like, okay, gotcha, I got you. And then his DVD, yeah, it was penises the whole time. Yeah, penises. it was penis shaped the whole time. You, you cracked the case. I did what the Disney animators did. I said, can you make this a penis? And can you make that a vagina? I just want to see something like that, because obviously it's a PG-13 movie, and I can't have nudity in this one. 
By the way, have you noticed that most of Zack Snyder's film it's mostly nudity? I just realized that, like all <laughs> most of his movies, yeah, movie. most of it, yeah. If it's I mean, R-rated, it, then yeah, for it sure. Kind, kind of gave it away with three hundred, where we see Leonidas's like. It was a full. You see, you see a little bit of his junk. You see a little junk of Leonidas in that scene. A little yeah. dark, but you have to turn. You have to adjust the brightness of your to calibrate your TV. <laughs> to I don't want to know how you know this, Matt. I'm like, no God! I don't. Matt, <laughs> Matt, what the hell's wrong with you? <laughs> I mean, look at in T two. Look at the T one thousand when he's bending down. And you're seeing this junk for a little bit. <laughs> Matt, Matt's really or when you see, or when you see the, or when you see the first Terminator when he's going from the, walking the shadows in the beginning of the movie, and you can literally see his junk in plain view, watching, watching it in ten eighty p. Penis, penis, penis. Yes, penis! Crack the case. I found. I saw it. I found a found penis, it. guys. Guys, I found a penis. And then he's just like, <laughs> and he's like, what? Yeah, there's a penis right here. I bet you he watches Grown Ups too. And when Adam Sandler jumps in the river naked, I freeze frame it. Penis, penis, got it, got his penis. All right, where's Chris Rock's now? Enhance thirty-four to forty-six. Tommy Boy. What about in Tommy Boy when the woman strips and goes skinny dipping in the pool, and you she dives in and you just freeze frame, freeze oh, frame. Bullshit, Matt, 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 we're not going. You know, yeah, you can't change the subject now, Matt. Go. Round one. Fight. Anyway, like I enjoyed this a little bit more than you guys. I don't think it's like, oh my god, it's a top tier episode. I do agree with the Jeremiah thing. I did not like him very much. Uh, I do like the whole that we still continue to explore the little bit of the mythos and the prophecy about the Mon and Sagid. A pivotal moment with between Lex and Clark when they become enemies. And when they when we see like Lionel in fucking Lex are about to touch the blade. We already know who touches it first, oh, yeah. but Clark doesn't get a good look. He was literally like way in a different angle, but he believes that it's Lionel. Like, but Martha says like, you got to accept the possibility that it could be Lex, that he could be your truest enemy. But we see Jonathan encouraging him that you should not let any prophecy tell you that who you should be, Like you can, you need to write your own destiny. And I thought like, Oh God, what a great moment with John Shiner's performance, which that's something that I do truly appreciate about this episode. And the ending where Lex is doing another interpretation about Naman and Sagid, that he believes that Sagid could be the is the hero of the story, and Naman is the enemy of the world. I've been thinking a lot about this prophecy. I've got a new interpretation. This Naman guy is supposed to come from the stars, have the power of ten men, and shoot fire from his eyes, right? But if one person could do all that, he would be a formidable enemy. He could become a tyrant if nobody kept him in check. Anybody who'd be willing to fight him would have to be pretty brave. Did it ever occur to you that maybe the hero of the story is the Geith? It's kind of, I do, I will say, I do, I will give you that. That is true. I do like that. I like the fact that, you know, Lex is like, cause Lex, he, like, have you ever heard the saying, each villain interpret and in the, they're the hero in their own head. Yeah. And so that's what's a great thing about Lex because he believes that he's the hero of the story and not Clark. And that's in, really that's in his own interpretation. Which I will say, I will say, I do agree, Matt. I think I, I will say, well, let's hear Ryan's interpretation. Ryan, what did you think of this episode? Zack Snyder would later part of the scene for Batman or Superman. Zack Snyder watches going, I like that. I like that. <laughs> yeah, this is, is this, this whole sequence is Lionel Luther strikes back. Did you see that? You saw it, didn't you? The house just exploded. And there's more of the scene where, oh, yeah, there, Lex is poisoned. Oh. That shit got dark so quickly. Lionel strikes back. Yeah, and Martha sees the symbols burning in the field. The Kryptonian symbols. By the way, that's the same barber. That's, that's actually the real barber from the on their show that cuts their hairs. And so they said, Hey, you want this? If you want to do a day on this show where you can see your face? And he's like, sure. I'll shave. He's like, all you do is shave. And John Glover actually got his head shaved. He was that committed. He said, shave my head. Well, you, you can already tell that he's literally getting his head shaved. <laughs> I mean, the, there's prosthetics that can make your, to make your head look like he's getting shaved. Like they're literally just showing him just getting his head shaved. <laughs> you can't fake that. Now I am oh. bald with my son. 
Now I know what it feels also, like. Also, this is like the second time that Lex has gotten poisoned via scotch. You would think he'd be more careful with it. And we get naked Clark just sitting there naked going. <laughs> <laughs> on. Sitting, he's sitting there naked, naked in the clouds. I don't know why I'm naked. 